while repeat followers saying gluconeogenesis is stress on the liver and increasing high cortisol levels. He's because they're idiots <laughs> and it doesn't increase cortisol levels. That's just nonsense. Um, yeah, I don't know where they get that logic at all in that regard. What they do is they, they look at these stupid um, reductionist uh, sort of pathways and all that. They conclude based on that. But the reality is that you it's like when you initially go into um, fasting. When you look at those studies, yes, your cortisol goes up, but then it actually comes down and it stays down back to physiological levels. It's just basically a response to produce more um, sugar. It's a signaling, you know, cort- high c- cortisol isn't, you know, high chronic cortisol is a problem, but cortisol on in its own as a hormone is, has signaling um, properties. So it actually signals to the body to do something. The dawn effect, when you wake up, what is the... The raising cortisol is one to wake you up and get you going, but also to basically tell the initiate more glucose in the body. Gluconeogenesis isn't basically determined on high cortisol. It's basically that dawn effect to actually produce more. That's why your blood sugar goes higher in the morning than in later in the afternoon. You're still producing glucose from gluconeogenesis in a low carbohydrate state, but you don't need high cortisol. High cortisol is a signal to say to the body, dump out not only glucose, but dump out also free fatty acids. So it's actually telling the body, I want you to actually increase the amount of glucose you're putting in the body and increase the amount of free fatty acid you're putting in the body. Why does the body do that? It Because it wants to get, to get you going. You haven't eaten. You've got no nutrients in your body. You've woken up. And basically, the body is waiting for nutrients. You have to go out and hunt an animal and get it. And that's why you get this big effect, and then it comes down at about 11 o'clock. That's a normal thing. That's why you don't want to put food in that period. You know, from 10.30 to 11 o'clock is that transition period. From then, you can break your time-restricted feeding. And that's what our ancestors did. They would more or less have killed an animal by then, or may have come across certain foods and picked something and eaten something. But generally speaking, when they wake up, they get their gear, they're out, um, they're out hunting. There is no food, no supermarket, no fridge, no nothing. They have to go and get the food. And that's why they need that boost. It's, you know, but in the rest of the day, even though you're actually releasing free fatty acid, you're, release, you're releasing glucose through gluconeogenesis, demand-driven, it's basically at a much slower the level that the body requires. And if you exercise a bit more and you run a bit and you deplete glycogen, it'll actually boost a bit more, but cortisol doesn't go up. Just glucagon basically will push a bit more out. So it's nonsense. You know, it's again reductionist thinking. They get these dawn effect sort of studies and stuff like that, and then they go, oh, look what's happening. But, you know, that's the circadian. Let's look at, throughout the whole day, the entire cycle of cortisol, because cortisol is tied to melatonin. You can't have high melatonin unless you've got cortisol in the morning that rises and then it goes through a circadian rhythm cycle. These people just don't know what they're talking about. They're idiots. You know, Again, reductionist thinking um, at its best. So it's just nonsense. You know, because they can't, they need to explain why cortisol is very, can be very low when gluconeogenesis is happening. They don't answer that one, do they? Because it doesn't serve their narrative. That's the thing. Again, reductionism. They don't think in terms of circadian rhythms, all this sort of stuff. If you've got cortisol through the night, it usually happens from high glucose and insulin resistance. It doesn't happen when you're in a low-carbohydrate state. So, And especially when you're taking in more salt, which brings down um, cortisol levels because that's another thing. The lack of salt can also push up cortisol levels, you know, and basically poor regulation of um, electrolytes. And what does taurine do, which is in animal foods? It is osmot, osmolite. It regulates the, um, uh, the electrolytes and prevents these sort of things happening. Plus it increases GABA, which calms you in the evening and actually improves also, your 
record um, your um, melatonin production as well. So if you understand physiology in a more holistic way, with circadian rhythms and all that, it all makes sense. But if you just use reductionist nonsense, yeah. And then you basically say, oh, well, you know, use sugar. Yes, obviously use sugar to bring it down. But that's not the proper physiology. Then you derange the whole physiology. It's just nonsense. Again, reductionist thinking, unfortunately, Jin. 